Okay, so welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining this kind of uh, um, Stream Z community meeting, but mostly focused on uh, uh, Stream Z and the cruise control integration. Uh, what's the status right now and what is on the plate? So what's the future, the roadmap and uh, what are the features that we would like to, to have in Stream Z uh, by using some other features from cruise control. So let's start uh, kind of the agenda. Oops, I just exit. Uh, let's uh, um, see. So what I'm talking about uh, here is uh, uh, just explaining a, a little bit for the people who doesn't know how the rebalancing works today in the um, in the integration that we have between StreamZ and uh, the cruise control. So what's the next, as you already mentioned, and what are the proposals, the StreamZ proposals that are already uh, upstream uh, and the issues. And then we can start an open discussion on what uh, will be the next steps and how we can move forward. So uh, regarding the, the rebalancing and the integration that we have today in uh, cruise control, uh, so today, uh, running a rebalancing using uh, uh, StreamZ and Cruise Control is a kind of manual and uh, user-driven process. So there is a specific uh, uh, Kafka rebalance custom resource uh, that has to be created by the user by specifying, for example, the goals uh, in order to get an optimization proposal um, for running the rebalancing. So uh, after creating this uh, uh, Kafka rebalance custom resource, uh, the operator is able to connect to the Chris control and by using the REST API exposed by Chris control to ask for, it, um, for the optimization proposal. And then um, when it's ready, it's still the user uh, to evaluate the proposal itself. So all the information uh, will be available in the Kafka rebalance custom resource. And uh, so what are the, 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 um, the number of partitions that are going to be moved, uh, the sides of the movement and things like that. And then, at th so at that point, the, the user has to apply uh, a specific approval notation in order to uh, ask to uh, cruise control to start the actual rebalancing and uh, moving the partitions as it's uh, proposed. Uh, so the interaction happens always through this Kafka rebalance custom resource. Uh, other than the approval annotation, there is uh, the, the stop annotation in order to stop uh, a running uh, rebalancing. So a rebalancing that is already in process, it will, will end the, 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 the batch of the rebalancing that happening uh, before stopping the entire process or even the refresh annotation because it's possible that when you get an optimization proposal, uh, you don't approve it uh, straight away. So you go away and then back and then you want to refresh in order to understand because the cluster is still working and uh, data are flowing, if something is changed and maybe the situation is worse or better than before, so you want to refresh the optimization proposal and then finally approve. Um, in one of the latest uh, uh, addition in, uh, in StreamZ upstream, uh, there is uh, also this annotation, which is about the auto approval. So it means that maybe in some use cases, you don't want to have this kind of manual interaction for approving, but just uh, annotating the Kafka rebalance resource with this annotation when you create the resource. And then uh, after getting the um, optimization proposal, the, the operator will just approve the uh, proposal itself, starting the uh, rebalancing uh, through cruise control. Uh, there are different modes uh, that you can use in the rebalancing process. So the full mode, which is about rebalancing uh, across all the brokers in the cluster, so moving partitions around all the brokers. Uh, the add the brokers one, which is uh, when you, for example, add the new brokers to your cluster, so it's quick uh, in order to move some partitions from the current uh, brokers to the new ones, uh, or the remove brokers, which is useful when you want to remove some brokers, but be uh, before doing that, you want to move uh, uh, partitions, uh, replicas out of these brokers so that then you can remove them in order to avoid having uh, under-replicated partitions or um, things like that. 
So you can specify this mode in your Kafka rebalance custom resource. And of course, even the, the IDs of the brokers that you want to add or remove. Uh, so this is the, 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 the status of the heart right now, uh, how it works and what's the next. So actually there are four main uh, areas or maybe um, uh, yeah, three because two of them are kind of related um where uh, we want to like to work for uh, a very better integration of cruise control in stream z the first one is about uh, changing the topic replication factor so it's about the topic operator uh, which is not able today to change the topic replication factor and one way is to use this feature which is available in uh, in, in cruise control there is already a proposal for that <clears throat> then there are the next two uh, proposals that are kind of related. One is about preventing the user to scale down the cluster. If the brokers that you are scaling down are hosting replicas, in order to force kind of the user to move the replicas out of these brokers before uh, scaling down. Uh, and uh, kind of related to this, there is uh, the auto rebalancing uh, proposal, which is allowing um, running a uh, rebalancing uh, uh, automatically when the user want to scale up or scale down the Kafka cluster. Uh, the last one, which is not uh, a proposal, but it's an issue uh, for um, so coming from the community, people asking for adding the support for the self healing, which is one of the features that we have increased control. Uh, so kind of uh, maybe auto rebalancing or anyway, in general, fixing uh, anomalies during the normal life cycle of the Kafka cluster. But yeah, we will see uh, in a few all these points uh, uh, in the next uh, slides. So the first one uh, is uh, changing the topic uh, replication factor. I tried to summarize uh, um, what is in the proposal, in the current proposal, which is under review. Uh, as you already mentioned, this is about integrating cruise control somehow with the, the topic operator. Uh, so it will be at this point not the, the cluster operator anymore to talk with the cruise control and to the REST API of cruise control, but the topic operator itself. Uh, uh, you know that in the topic operator, there is, uh, so you, you use the Kafka topic resource for creating and handling your topics. And um, the, the, the spec.replicas field is there for uh, defining the number of replicas when you create the topic, but in this case, even for changing the replicas for the topic itself. Uh, so the proposal more or less uh, mm, summarized the, this way that the, the topic operator is going to use the cruise control API. There is a specific endpoint in order to change uh, the replication factor and then uh, kind of uh, querying the cruise control API again in order to get the, the status of the operation and then uh, reflecting this status in the Kafka topic resource. So this is more or less the summary of this first thing that we have on the, on the roadmap. Uh, the next one is about the auto rebalancing on cluster scaling. So um, rebalancing on scaling today, it's possible, but it's still a manual process. So it means that um, when you, for example, uh, um, want to do a rebalance on, on a scale up, so you are adding more brokers to your cluster, but then, you know, these brokers are not used. Uh, so th they are used only if a new topic is created. So Kafka will create replicas on the new adult brokers, but the, the replicas coming from the old topics already existing on the other brokers will not be moved automatically on the new on the new brokers. So uh, you want somehow, of course, um, scaling up and then running a rebalance. So today it's possible, but it's manual. So you have first to scale up the cluster and then you can create your own Kafka rebalance custom resource using the add brokers mode, specifying the IDs of the brokers and then uh, a specific quick control re uh, REST API endpoint will be used in order to uh, start moving replicas um, even to the new uh, brokers. Uh, on the other way around, uh, the rebalance on scale down. So you want to scale down your cluster. So first of all, you want to rebalance partitions, so moving partitions out of the brokers running uh, 
uh, in the cluster that you are going to remove with the scale down. So uh, creating the Kafka rebalance custom resource in the remove brokers mode, uh, listing the brokers that you want to remove, the rebalancing will happen, then the Kafka, the, 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 the brokers will be kind of empty and uh, you can scale down the cluster as usual. So changing the spec Kafka replicas field in your Kafka custom resource. Um, what does it mean uh, adding this auto rebalancing or scaling? Uh, it means that um, uh, we want a kind of more integration between uh, scaling and rebalancing. So the user has just to scale the cluster. So acting on the Kafka custom resource, um, the Kafka rebalance resource should not be involved. Um, so the user just will just scale up or scale down the cluster changing uh, the, the, the spec Kafka replicas field. And then the operator will take care of uh, scale up first and then rebalance or on the other side, uh, rebalance first and scale down your uh, cluster. Uh, right now, there is a uh, proposal uh, that I'm working on. Uh, it's kind of uh, yeah, stale because it, I started a few months ago. Uh, I have to come back soon on this. And um, so um, the, the, before this proposal, there is another one uh, which is about, that I already mentioned, is kind of related to this, which is about avoiding that uh, uh, the cluster is scaled down when there are brokers uh, um, running some uh, replicas. So it will enforce the fact that the operator has to rebalance first and then uh, scale down. But it's, of course, it's useful anyway uh, if you want to uh, rebalance uh, with scale down in a manual way, so avoiding the the user error that it's going to scale down before running a, a rebalance. Uh, regarding uh, the auto rebalancing on scale down, right now the proposal uh, is about using um, uh, a new custom resource, uh, which is this Kafka rebalance template. Because in general, um, maybe the user want to specify some configuration for the rebalance. So if uh, when I want to scale up or scale down the cluster, I want to uh, reach these goals, for example, as the user does today with the Kafka rebalance resource. And this is referenced via the, the, the Kafka resource. And um, the proposal is about, uh, yeah, creating a corresponding Kafka rebalance. So the operator will uh, auto create a corresponding Kafka rebalance in order to leverage the, the state machine and the Kafka rebalance uh, assembly operator that it's already working for the manual rebalancing. Um, so the relationship, as already mentioned, between uh, uh, the Kafka and the Kafka rebalance template is uh, shown in this in this slide. So the way it should be that uh, in the Kafka custom resource you can specify an auto rebalance field, and uh, you can say, okay, if I want to add brokers, so when I am going to scale up the cluster, I want to use this template. So with this configuration of goals for the rebalancing. Uh, differently if I want to uh, do some remove brokers, so on scale down or maybe even for a full rebalancing. Uh, of course, you can specify the mode uh, so in a way that you can share the template. So you want to use, for example, the same template uh, um, for uh, adding or uh, removing brokers. Like, for example, in this case, the template is, is the same for adding and remove brokers, but it's different for the, 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 the full rebalancing. Um, this proposal got some feedback. So um, there are some concerns, some doubts. And um, the first of them is that, uh, yeah, the Kafka rebalance template is really a kind of duplicate of the Kafka rebalance. Uh, the spec is kind of the same because the, you can specify the goals, uh, some flags. Uh, for getting the rebalancing proposal. The only thing that you are not going to specify are the mode and the brokers field, uh, which are used in the Kafka rebalance custom resource in order to specify which kind of rebalancing you want to run and the brokers that you are adding or removing. And of course, these fields are automatically created by the operator 
in the corresponding Kafka rebalance resource because the operator knows that you are scaling up or scaling down and what are the IDs of the brokers. So it will get the Kafka rebalance template content and then moving in a new Kafka rebalance, specifying the modem brokers and running the rebalancing as it was the user uh, doing that. Um, of course, uh, uh, so one of the comments was, yeah, it's kind of, um, maybe it can be confusing for the users because we are going to have uh, or mixing Kafka rebalances, custom resource created by the users and maybe one or more created automatically, uh, automatically by the, the, the operator. And maybe what happens if the user is kind of hacking the Kafka rebalance created by the operator. So it's going to breaking the, the, the rebalancing somehow or stopping the rebalancing, things like that. So there is a, um, a kind of uh, idea about improvements that we can make on this. Uh, today, the overall state machine of the rebalance is in the Kafka rebalance assembly operator because it was thought just for the Kafka rebalance custom resource. We could kind of um, factoring out the, the state machine uh, and uh, interaction with the cruise control for doing rebalancing in order to be used by still the Kafka rebalance assembly operator for the manual user driven rebalancing. So handling the Kafka rebalance resource as it happens today or directly by the Kafka reconciler, which is the component in charge to reconcile the Kafka custom resource and handling the scale up, the scale down. So it's possible uh, that this component can use the cruise control rebalancing state machine in order to run the rebalancing when it's needed. Uh, but not creating the Kafka rebalance resource. But anyway, in this case, maybe we need to track some status of uh, the rebalancing, either for handling um, crashing on the operator and recovering where it was before. So maybe in the Kafka custom resource. So everything is just an idea. So we, we have to explore that. Uh, and uh, maybe I think that uh, uh, it's not a simple change factoring out the, the state machine, maybe it could need a proposal itself, but yeah, it's something that we, we can discuss. Um, the last thing was about uh, the request from the community to have or to leverage the self-healing um, feature coming from uh, cruise control. So um, with the self-healing, so Cruise control as a uh, component, which is called the anomaly detector. So it's able to detect some anomalies on the on your Kafka cluster, like for example, broker failures. So a broker is crashing and it's not working properly. So it's not responding. Uh, some goal violation. So if you define your goals for having uh, a cluster balanced uh, on network, on uh, disk, things like that. It can detect the disk failures in the JBOD mode and uh, even anomaly related to metric or topics like, for example, um, not the, the re requested replication factor or metric uh, metrics coming from Kafka. So if uh, you specify an anomaly related to a specific metric and then this anomaly is detected. Um, the anomaly detector is able to identify these uh, anomalies and then you can enable the self-healing. So it's going to start uh, a process uh, to fix, so uh, automatically to start a process to fix uh, the, uh, the anomaly that could be about uh, moving partitions around, like for example, in case of a goal violation. Uh, or uh, remove or demoting brokers if there is a broker failures. So it's something that um, uh, the, the cruise control is going to, to run out, uh, automatically. Um, for this, there is a, yeah, a um, straightforward implementation in the, um, so an out of the box implementation in cruise control. Um, what I saw taking a look at the code is there is no implementation in case of metric and topic anomalies in sense that uh, it's uh, a kind of um, uh, user and custom related to the user because it depends on the, the metrics that you want to uh, detect where the anomaly is and uh, how to fix that. 
Um, so the idea, I guess, from the community was about using and leveraging the self-feeding. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, the rebalancing at some point can start by uh, the cruise control. So it's not driven by the operator. So we are changing the normal flow that we have today, where the user is creating the Kafka rebalance resource and the operator is uh, acting. Uh, so is acting on that for running, for asking Chris Control to start the rebalancing. In this case, the self-feeling uh, starts because an anomaly was detected and uh, Chris Control starts that, but the operator does know nothing about this, right? So it's not aware uh, that the operation is uh, happening. Um, so we are not using the state machine in the in the um, in the operator for handling uh, a Kafka rebalance resource which doesn't exist in this case. On the other way around, the Chris control maybe is not aware of some ongoing administration operation that are running in the cluster because driven by the operator, like for example, a rolling update because you changed your configuration on the broker or an upgrades. Uh, so version of Kafka and things like that. So I guess that uh, we are kind of missing a, a communication channel between the two parties. So the risk control uh, let the operator knows that something is happening on the rebalancing side and maybe the risk control. Uh, so avoiding that, uh, so the operator avoiding the risk control to start the rebalancing because there are some ongoing admin operations uh, in the cluster. Um, I had a, so reading the issue on the um, GitHub upstream, and then we can start our open discussion. So let's, uh, the last two or three slides, I took a look uh, quickly at the code in the, in the cruise control. Uh, so for now, I, I see a couple of idea that maybe we could explore, uh, or try to dig into. Um, so one is uh, actually leveraging the self feeling. So. Uh, we want really to use the self-feeling proposed by, uh, so mm, provided by the cruise control. But what we need is this kind of communication channel, right, between the operator and cruise control. Um, there is uh, this implementation in cruise control, which is the self-feeling notifier class that allows you to have a kind of extension point as alerting uh, um, someone that. Uh, the the the, the self-feeling is starting uh, its process of um, fixing some anomalies there is for example an implementation of this uh, of uh, for slack for microsoft teams so, so just sending when this alert is raised just sending some messages on slack or things like that uh, maybe it could be a way for having our own alerting which would be maybe creating a self-feeling related custom resource so that the cruise control, uh, the operator on the other side can check that uh, a self-feeling, maybe it's going to start because a new custom resource was created by cruise control in this way. Uh, so in this, uh, in this way, we have a kind of uh, one way from cruise control to the operator. Uh, it's not so, so it seems to me that it's not so simple going to the other way around in sense that uh, how the operator can say to the cruise control, wait, stop, there is this operation running, this admin operation running. Uh, I noticed that um, when uh, an anomaly is raised in the code, you can ask to fix, to ignore, or to check later. So we could try to kind of postpone uh, asking to cruise control, check again later if the anomaly is still there. Maybe it will be still there, and then I will ask you, OK, you can start the self-feeling because the admin operation ended. Or we can just uh, ignore, so asking to the cruise control, don't start right now uh, the, 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 the self-feeling. Um, and then the operator should check the progress of the operation uh, through the cruise control API. Uh, it's possible that we could need to have a custom implementation for metrics, at least. Uh, for example, for uh, metrics related to disk skew uh, is one of the examples. And uh, yeah, that could be one way to do this. But anyway, it was just an exploration that I had on the code. So it's something that uh, in the community we should dig into more. Uh, the other way could be not using the self-feeling feature. So we can kind of 
plug into the uh, anomaly detector, so implementing our own anomaly notifier, uh, so not using the self-filling notifier. Uh, in this case, it will notify that uh, an anomaly is detected, maybe even in this case, uh, a custom resource so that the operator can detect that an anomaly was detected by the cruise control. Um, and uh, so cruise control is not going to fix that anomaly, but then it means that we are going to to need the logic in the operator to make decisions this time. So you kn we know about which kind of the anomaly was detected. Uh, I'm not sure about what kind of information you get about that anomaly, other than the type of the anomaly. Uh, and then uh, has the cruise control takes some decisions today to fix the anomaly, we should have that logic in the operator. Uh, and that point, the operator will leverage the, the rebalancing state machine that we have today. So it will start to interact with the cruise control API. For example, if a goal violation was detected uh, using the rebalance endpoint or the add brokers, the remove broker, so sorry, the remove brokers, if for example, there is a, a, a broker crash and we want to remove that broker, uh, so things like that. So it means that it will be the operator driving the, 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 the fix. Of course, it means that somehow we are kind of reinventing the wheel in this case. So we are not leveraging the self-filling anymore and we are mm, getting the logic in the operator. Maybe it could be complex. So there are uh, drawbacks here as well. Um, at this point, yeah, from, uh, so I, this is the overall picture. Uh, at some now we have we can start this open discussion, which is um, what are the next steps that we want to so how we want to move forward on this. Uh, people uh, so uh, even hearing by people that are already working on some of the proposals uh, or the ones that raised the the issue about self feeling. Uh, how we can, uh, you know, uh, working together in a better way when on one side we have the auto rebalancing on scaling uh, and on the other side implementing the self-feeding. Um, if the conflict some, somehow, uh, how we can, you know, consult the work together. And uh, yeah, if I other idea for dealing with the communication between the operator and cruise control, if we use the self-feeding, and whatever you have in mind uh, about uh, yeah the, the cruise control integration and, and the steps that we want to move forward for now. So I hope that it was clear at least. And uh, now I guess that we can start for the next 30 minutes to, I don't know, answer questions, raising concerns or anything you want to, to add to this. Can I ask a question, Paolo? Yep. Um, so just going back to scale down. Um, so what, sorry, this is probably just my ignorance, but during scale down, what's, okay, what I heard was um, scale down involves um, using cruise control to uh, move partitions off brokers and then um, eventually you, that broker is empty, so you're then able to reduce the number of um, brokers in the cluster. Did I understand that bit right? Yes. Okay. So what stops more partitions being created on the on the broker that's the target broker that will be scaled down? Is there anything that does that, or is that just organised from the user's point of view? Yeah, good question. Uh, right now, there is nothing that uh, stops the user to create a topic while you are uh, running a rebalance to move out the partitions. So maybe partitions could be created on the brokers that you are kind of try to be, to, to make empty, right? So that's okay. something that, yeah, it's something that we should improve from this point of view, because there is nothing stopping to, to run an operation like this. Because presumably, uh, you know, scale down way preparing to um, get remove and remove a broker, that could take a long time in yes. a, you know a big system where you have you know lots of data, and um, that could run for 
minutes or hours quite easily, I suppose. Yeah. And anyway, the, the proposal that uh, Shubham is working on, uh, it's going to, to stop you to scale down. So it means that uh, even if the, the rebalancing is happening and, uh, and the partition sun moves out of these brokers and then the user is creating the topic re um, new topics and new replicas are put on these brokers that you want to remove, when the, the, the operator will try to scale down, uh, uh, this feature should block you and stop you because meanwhile new replicas were created so you have to run again a new rebalance for moving these replicas out the fact that uh, uh, it's um, it's that that could be a long run operation is true i i remember that was a discussion maybe with federico uh, on that proposal and jakub get correct uh, on this where uh, uh, we uh, uh, could add the flag where uh, you want to force to not waiting for the brokers to be empty. So you know what you are doing. You are removing the brokers while there are replicas on it. So just force without waiting for all the rebalancing ending or just not running the rebalancing at all. I want just to scale down even if there are replicas on that broker. Thanks, Paolo. Well, I think this force operation seems a bit risky because uh, it, it's kind of tricky to clean this up later in Kafka. So <laughs> no, no, yeah, that, that, that's true. But to know what you're doing, right? So, uh, no, yeah, that's true. It yeah, was it, just raised. It is yeah. risky, Mikael, but imagine that you might have a situation where you, for example, already lost the broker because I don't know it was on a hardware which burned down and you want to kind of scale until, I don't know, you get new hardware or something like that, then you might not be able to kind of wait until the broker sinks and then move the partitions. You maybe want just to scale up and deal with it the hard way. So I think yeah. there might be use cases, but yeah, it's definitely expert option. Um, and also, I, so I hope to, improve the state of this upstream to be able to prevent partition being a same to broker at some point, because basically it's, uh, this could be an endless battle, like you're waiting, you're moving stuff out of this broker, but users can put new partitions at any time. And, uh, so you could have to move new partitions while you do this new or created, and uh, this is an endless cycle. So uh, until there's something upstream to really prevent new partition from being onto a broker. Uh, uh, I'm afraid we'll have to do this, this thing, but but having something upstream is, is a proper way to, to fix this. I think of, so for this scenario, say, let's say if you want to scale down just one broker, so I say from the Kafka Manager UI, when you create a topic, you can Sometimes you can select which broker you want to put a partition on it. Maybe we can add this option in the topic operator. Uh, when you create a, a topic, default you can say you can apply to all the brokers. But I give you an option, say, oh, I know I'm just remove three brokers. I just put uh, put the options there so topic operator can generate a partition replica assignment. Don't put a new new replica in the, the, the broker I'm going to remove. So that's kind of the thing maybe can help. Yes, so in Kafka, you can do that. You can create a topic with a specific assignment. So yeah, yes, so I think, I think that's, that's, that's one thing. And also if you do, so I also found that in the Kafka itself, if you create a topic, it's uh, sometimes it's the best effort for example, even let's say you have 10 brokers, your partition is, your topic always a partition is 10 or something. So eventually it's not evenly distributed. So sometimes I feel that uh, if I create a topic and uh, if I calculate the assignment to make sure, let's say, oh, each broker have exactly the same, one, same number of partition for this topic, it could be easier to make the cluster more balanced. So. So, so, so I think, so, so it, yeah, you can do that, but um, I mean, that's kind of funny because we are in the re automatically rebalancing discussion. 
So cruise control may decide to move anything at any oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah, that right. way, <laughs> even though you yeah. move your things uh, in a specific fashion, uh, obviously cruise control will can undo but, everything you've done. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So what I'm mentioning first part, I think that if we are see that uh, we want to avoid the user to put a new replica on the brokers, we are going to remove. I think uh, if you just uh, allow user this option, then if user aware of this one, then we don't need to have well, this issue will be resolved, right? So I think it works if the user creating the topics is the same user that is decommissioning the brokers. Because yeah. if you have like a product team creating the topics and a, and a SRE team that are adding real brokers, if they don't talk to each other, like, you know, but, and, and if it's the same person, basically we could just say, well, hold on, I'm going to create my topic in 30 minutes. I wait for from the partition. And then once I shut down my broker, then I can create my topic. And uh, so, you know, it's, there's lots of gotchas here in terms of, uh, who does what and and uh when could the the self-healing feature then get in the way in terms of if you've got self-healing enabled in your cluster if you decide to scale down your cluster and therefore move your partition so they're not properly spread anymore could you trigger cruise control to go, oh, you're not properly spread across your brokers, I'll spread you back out again. And then you can't scale down because you've been spread out. So I think, think for the self-healing, we definitely need a mechanism that allows us to pause the self-healing so that cruise control doesn't start taking action while you're busy doing upgrades or scaling up or down your cluster. Would it be possible to give self, sorry, I don't know very much about self-healing, but would it be possible to give self-healing enough hints to know that you actually want partitions to be removed from a broker you're trying to, um, you're preparing to remove from cluster? You know, in other words, just let self-healing do the whole, do the whole job for us. Can you say again, uh, Kit? I said, is it possible? Sorry, I, I don't know very much about how self-healing works in, in cruise control, but I was wondering, is it possible to give self-healing enough hints about how you'd like it to behave to say um, that broker one, I'm, you know, I'm preparing to remove that from the cluster. So give self-healing enough information to start moving partitions from that broker for you. I'm just wondering, yeah, just that. I guess the tricky thing is how the goals work. So for example, I'm trying to remember what goals options there are. For the different goals in cruise control, if they apply across all of the brokers, then I assume cruise control must have some mechanism that it works out what all of the brokers means. And then the question is, how does it then be told that you now have less, you're going to have less brokers than it thinks you have currently? Well, so, so it learns about the brokers to be removed when you tell it to the REST API, I'm going to remove this broker. So generate me a new assignment. But moves all these partitions, well, move all partitions from these brokers into something else. Um, so there's no way to, to reply to keep question. There's no way to preempt it, to say, oh, I'm going to do this. Basically, it knows when you tell it, OK, do this now. <laughs> so when you call the slash remove broker API, that's when it knows, basically. Uh, but I guess your question arrives when you start this operation and something else goes wrong. And uh, basically try to do self-healing while you're removing brokers. Because if it's before, basically it will uh, it will do self-healing, but not removing anything. Uh, 
I guess is when these two things happen together. So it's either doing self-filling and you start removing brokers, or you start removing brokers and it has to self-filling. I'm not quite sure what happens in these scenarios, to be honest. So from what I understood, when uh, so the self-filling works just together with the, the the anomaly detector, right? So if an anomaly yes. is detected, so it means that, uh, as you said, Michael, if there is an anomaly which is uh, you are removing a broker, so the user is uh, scaling down the cluster. The self filling will detect that the brokers is uh, kind of uh, not working anymore, and then it will run the the operation for the remove brokers part. So it will start to move partitions out of that broker, but only yeah when you start when you create the anomaly. So it's a kind of user driven anomaly because the the, the, the cluster is scaling down. I'm not sure. So, but I'm not quite sure. I need. To, I mean, I'm not looked at this for a while. But I thought when you when you're doing the remove broker, it's not an anomaly. Like it, it, it is removing the broker. It's, uh, so yes. The broker yeah. yeah because in that down. case, we are calling the remove brokers, right? We are not just so, removing I mean, the brokers. Yeah. Check, but uh, I don't think it's. I don't think he. No, no, no. It won't happen. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes. Because then you would expect the broker not to be there, so it's not an anomaly when it disappears. Uh, so yeah. the thing is, uh, from from the self from the, the 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 from this point of view, what are the, the the thoughts? Are you going? Are we going to actually really use the self feeling, or uh, so? What are your feelings? We should use the self feeling, or we will we should implement that from kind of scratch in the operator because. We are not sure that we have everything in cruise control in order to create this bi-directional channel and making cruise control aware of what's happening on the operator side and vice versa. I doubt we can answer this on the call. I think you probably need to go around and play with the APIs, try to build something to see what the options are. Uh, I've tried to use self-filling in the past and I don't think it was working for my use cases. Um, I think the thing that I missed the most was a way to be notified once the thing is fixed. So you'll be told there's something to fix. You can say, fix it for me, please. But you're not really, be, you're not really told uh, it is fixed. <laughs> if I remember correctly, basically uh, all the callbacks you have is for something that has happened or something bad that has happened. So I think for my use case, it was, I, I was having trouble to link it with the rest of the pipeline while in place. Um, I mean, here we have a different use case and requirements, so maybe it's fine to to not have a callback to it. But I think until we play with the APIs and try the multiple uh, pluggable components, um, I think it'll be hard to come up with a decision on a call like this. Uh, I guess it's mostly a matter of uh, we need to go back and try out the APIs and see yeah. what sort of multiple pipelines we can put together and which one of these work and which one of them is the best. Um, so the next question could be, uh, are there people on the call in the community that would be interested to work on this? Because it was started by a user, but to be honest, I don't see him on the on the call. Uh, so more people jumped into the discussion. Yeah, so I was one of the people that I guess um, was adding to the discussion. Um, it's definitely it's definitely something that I'd be interested to investigate to understand more what the options are. I think for me the the piece that um, would probably push us in one direction or the other is um, for the, is to understand, is there a way for us to influence whether or not self-healing is happening? Because I think under the scale down, if we're asking cruise control to do the removal of the partitions from the broker about to scale down, then it, would I hope make sense that the self-healing would then know about that but it strikes me that as someone who's running Strimsy if I 
know that there's some sort of rebalance happening, I probably don't want to be doing other things to my cluster like upgrades or I don't know, other sort of maintenance work. And yeah, I feel like that might be the area where we end up deciding to not go for self-healing and do it sort of more strimsy, pushing it because then strimsy can know, you know, if we're draining nodes or doing upgrades or whatever else, we can pause the rebalancing and make sure that nothing's uh, nothing else is running. Um, but it's, yeah, from an individual perspective, I'm definitely keen to kind of understand what our options are um, and help with coming up with a proposal that we think makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, Kate. So it means that anyway, thanks, Kate, sorry. Uh, uh, so right now we have a kind of two main uh, flows that can go in parallel. The one that I was working and then the same Shubham, which is about the auditory balancing on scale up or scale down, which the first step could be formalize the improvements on the proposal and factoring out the Chris control state machine, which could be useful at some point to your work if the self-feeling will not be the way. Because if the self-feeling will not be the way, then it means that the operator will need to use the cruise control state machine implementation for running the rebalance after detecting or to be not notified by the anomalies. So I guess that these are two flows that can go in parallel. We should not, uh, you know, uh, uh, step on uh, our feet um, and yeah. I think if you have your own anomaly detector, you can, I think it's, I think the detection runs every, at an interval. Uh, so if something is still broken, you'll be called again, I think, at uh, because I think it's what you see in the UI, but uh, if you have an error, it keeps appearing every, every few minutes. So I think if you have your own anomaly detector, you can basically, uh, you know, if you don't want to do the self feeling, you can, I think, because what you return is basically true or false, like uh, try to fix it or just uh, thanks for letting me know, or ignore. So, you know, if you have everything going on, you could just say ignore for now. And once you're ready to self heal, you can say go ahead and try to fix it if you can. So, basically, you can gate whether it runs or not uh, in the detector. Yeah. That's exa so exactly I remember what... correctly how it works. So, so I think if you can link all things into that, you can detect or oh, no, are we <laughs> are we upgrading strings? And if so, maybe it's better to not try to uh, uh, to self heal just now. You know, or wait for for something to be finished or to run one thing at a time, basically. Yeah, that could be a way. Uh, in one of the slides, I mentioned the 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 fix, the the check again, and the ignore, right? So it could be one way to yeah to 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 move the the communication from one side to the other and say stop. So anyway, it's something yeah it should be investigated more. Uh, trying to to set up a kind of POC and see if everything the works. Plug in all points. So I think we've got to play with them, see which one makes sense to extend or what can you build. Yeah? Extending all of them, or, you know. Because it's it's super configurable, maybe a bit too much. No. <laughs> yeah, that's what you can do with it. Yeah. So in terms of the, when you mentioned configure the ability to configure Chris controller, I was also wondering if you could um, disable self healing for a specific type of anomaly. So if you know what kind of anomaly um, the current upgrade that you're about to do might cause, or the scaling up and down, um, is there a way to just using REST API or something to turn it off or disable it temporarily or something like that. I don't think cruise control has a way for, it, for you to pause it, but through the detector, basically you have a gate where you can, you know, depending on some external state, you can decide to tell it to self heal or not. Uh, but I don't think there's an API, a REST API to, to pause it, basically. I think, I think you can pause something once you've started it, but you can't tell it uh, not, not do anything from now on. 
when you configure cruise control self-healing i think you can tell it which goals it should and shouldn't self-heal based on though can't you so perhaps yes you yeah really there is a configuration it. yeah there is a configuration for that it's kind, kind, kind of a self dot healing dot goals something like that yeah. uh, but that's for the goals right not for the other anomalies so if a broker is crashed so not talking about uh, i don't know uh, scaling down but broker is crashed a pod was killed killing a pod would be an anomaly having the, the self-feeling uh, jump into even if there is a kind of grace uh, period time where you can specify that you know only if the broker is keep failing uh the 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 fix should start or things like that but yes you are right there is an option at least for the goals you can specify which goals should be detected for anomalies Oh, but now that you say that, I think you can also specify if you want self-healing enabled or not. And I think you can also change configs through the REST API. So I don't know if this one in particular can be changed through the REST API, but that could be a way to get, to get this behavior through the REST API, maybe to reconfigure it to say stop self-healing, set self-healing to false. Uh, for, uh, um. uh, OK. Changing through the REST API, to be honest, I don't know. But with my so experience in cruise control, I, I don't think so. API, but can you reconfigure this one through the REST API? I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure, to be know. honest. Yeah. I think you can reconfigure stuff with REST API. Yeah, so, a quick look at yeah, the docs. Yes, yeah, so I can see where it's supported parameters or disable self filling for, enable self filling for. So yeah. maybe you can do this. Yeah, it takes a list of anomaly types for enabling or disabling self filling. So you can do this with REST API in them. Uh, let me just paste the link in the chat room. There you go. That's for the types, not for the goals, right? So you can say, okay, um, enable okay, self-feeding, yeah, for for uh, for this type of anomalies. So for goal anomaly, for broker anomaly, but not which goals in the anomaly type uh, of goal. <laughs> At least I don't see any parameter for uh, changing that list. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't see anything either. But it means we could, I guess, disable self-healing for all anomaly types from the, so for example, if the operator is told it needs to scale down to a lower number of brokers or it needs to add brokers, it could first turn off self-healing, then do whatever rebalance it's gonna do, then scale down the brokers and then enable self-healing again. Yeah, yeah. So we at least have a, we know how to move forward on this. Uh, we have left just a couple of minutes. Uh, maybe a question for uh, Yao Dong uh, regarding the, the topic replication factor change. Uh, do you have any plan to move forward with your, with your proposal and your work, Yao Dong? Mm -hmm. I think in the, uh, the coming next few months, I probably have more time to it. So I still will keep trap, uh, keep pushing for it. So yeah. Okay, thanks. Great to hear that. So I guess that at least we have a plan at the end of this call. Uh, I and Shuban will continue to work on the auto rebalancing related to the scale up and scale down side. Um, then uh, Kate, uh, I guess, uh, will investigate on the self-feeling side and Yao Dong will continue on the topic of replication factor change. Yeah, I'll keep reaching out um, through the issue to the user who said that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Feeling. I guess the next steps for that is a proposal. So yeah, um, yeah I'll... I'll either create a proposal or at least try and start a discussion where we can get to the point of having a proposal. Yeah, cool. Thanks.
Of course, I, I will also share, we can also share on the issue the link to this recording so that, uh, yeah, the user from the community will get uh, what we discussed. Uh, and uh, I will also share the slide deck as well. Yeah, a bit well for the for typing in terms if you play with the detector or, uh, or notifiers. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see. Uh, and I've used them, I've played with them in the past. I'm curious to see if things have changed or if I can be helpful with, uh, with what I already know. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Any more questions? So thank you very much, everyone, for joining, I guess. And uh, I think that uh, if we will need uh, some other calls to sync, uh, some other more cruise control specific discussion, maybe we can set up another call. Let's see how, how things goes. I don't want to make a plan. So having a kind of call, I don't know, bi-weekly or, or weekly or things like that, or one pump per month. But let's see how, how things go. If we need, we can set up another call like this and sync again on the work that we are doing together on cruise control. So I guess that, that's it. And thank you very much for joining. And if Thanks. people have thank questions, you. I mean, uh, thank you. you can see on the stream Thanks channel. Thanks very much. Yep. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.